Right, so in this section, we're going to have a look at how to find an element in an array that has a specific value. If we're doing this in a normal NumPy list, so one, two, three, four, we would ask for the index that the value of three is at, and it would tell us it's in the second position, zero, one, two. Perfect, I agree with that. We can do the equivalent in NumPy. So let's set up my array. So it's a mp.array, open brackets, square brackets. Let's do one, two, three, four, three this time. So the issue with this, if I add an extra three in there, run it and run it, it tells me there's a three in position two. What about this little three in position five? Whereas if you're using NumPy and the where command, so we ask it, where does my array be equivalent to three? It tells you both positions. It tells you it's in the fourth, the second position and in the fourth position. So you can come and stuck in my list. It just tells you the first instance. When we're using NumPy, it tells you all of them. And you can do other things like work out where the odd numbers are. So if we do mp dot where my array, um, let's do the modulus division of two and say where that is not equal to zero. So that's going to pull out the odd numbers, zero, two, and four. Ironically, in the even number positions. That's how it works sometimes. So that tells you when it doesn't neatly divide into two, where there's a remainder after the division into two, we know it's an odd number. We can also actually do this all in one line and specify a new array if we want to. Um, so let's do this with a two-dimensional array, mp.where. So let's set my mp.array round brackets. So I'm just going to set up a very quick two-dimensional array, one, two, three, my first set, and three, five, six, my second one. And I'm going to ask that, please, where is it equal to three? And if we return that, I just caught that in the wrong place, so I've got an extra bracket there. There we go. So it tells me that it's in 0, 1 and 2, 0. So this is 0, 0, 1 and 2. So that is 0 there and 2 there. And then the second 3 is in the 0 is in the first and then in the 0 position. So that comes out in a slightly odd fashion there in that you would have to put these two arrays together if you wanted to get the exact indexes after each other. We can also do something that's called a search sorted on your array, which tells you the position of the first value that you're looking for. So if we have a look at my array again, and let's go with np.searchsorted, my array, and let's have a look for number two. So that tells you zero, two. So if I wanted to add in another value of two to keep this order of my array, I would need to add it in in position one. So that allows you to add a value to your array, but to preserve the order that it's on, which is like search sorted. So if I then wanted to add in a number three instead, it's going to come up in the second position, zero, one, two. So I'd need to insert that value there. And sometimes it's important which way you search your index from um, to preserve the 
order. So you can search from the right or you can search from the left. And you do that with the flag side. So MP, actually, let's just offer this one. We don't need to retype that out. We can add that in as side equals right. And that will search from the right. So this time we've got a different value because this is looking at it going three, four. So that three needs to go in that fifth position to preserve the order. If we're searching from the right, if we search from the left, it's going to go in position two because it needs to go here. So you can see which side that you search from is important. Normally you would have that in numerical order. Um, so it would come up in a similar value. But it's very important when you're working with decimal points and things to make sure you're searching from the correct side. OK, when we're ready, we're moving on to how to order an array. I will see you there when you're ready.